Hey guys, today we're gonna make like the world's easiest project. It's something that sells really well at um, all the craft shows I do. It's doggy bandanas. You can make these reversible if you want. They slip over the collar so the dog can't yank them off. And it's a good way to just use up extra scrap fabric that you've got lying around. Okay, so here we have the four sizes of bandanas that I normally sell for shows. I'd definitely say that this size right here is probably the most popular size. Um, my extra small would be like for a chihuahua. So you can see it's six and a half, two and a half by five and a half at the longest point. Um, my small, it would be for like, um, you know, like a Jack Russell Terrier or something in that size, a Corgi size. You can see it's nine and a half, four and a half by nine inches at the longest point. Um, my medium, which is a pretty just average size dog, you know, family dog type, um, 12 inches by six and a half by 13 and a half at the longest point. And my large, which would be, my neighbor has a very thick necked uh, pit bull, you know, a larger dog, these fit very well, um, is 14 and a half by seven inches by 15 and a half. All of these are cut out on freezer paper. You can buy freezer paper at the grocery store for like $4 a yard. You don't get very much for your money. I bought a roll um, at, restaurant supply 10 years ago it was a couple thousand feet for 26 bucks and i still have not used it all so you know look around on um online you know stuff like that you can get it way cheaper than buying it um at your local grocery store okay so when you're cutting out a pattern for a project like this it's important um that you're pattern is symmetrical so you don't end up with a lopsided bandana. Here's my old pattern from my extra large um, bandana. It's 14 and a half inches across the top and it's 15 and a half inches um, at this longest point here. So I've cut out a square that's 14 and a half by 15 and a half and what I'm going to do is my my side here that's uh, with the right angle side is seven inches long. So I'm gonna fold this in half down the middle. I'm gonna measure down seven inches. Right here. And then from that seven inch mark, I'm gonna angle straight to a nice point here right along that center fold and that's going to give you your perfectly symmetrical bandana shape okay so you can see here i've got um my fabric um you're going to need two pieces for this so if you want the front and the back of the bandana to be the same, just fold your fabric in half, you know, like I've got here. And that way when you cut out your two pieces, they'll be identical. Um, if you want to use a different color on the back, you can. These can be worn reversible, um, which is a big selling point for a lot of people. So um, the reason I use freezer paper for all of my patterns is because you can take an iron like this and press it to your fabric. The side that has that little bit of um, stick, the slick side will just slightly melt and it will stick itself down and hold in place, which makes it really convenient when you are cutting out a pattern piece. So you can do this with any kind of pattern, any kind of shape you want to cut out. Draw it in freezer paper first, iron it to your fabric, and there you go. All right, so you can see here, one of the nice things about making these is you don't get a lot of wasted fabric because they line up with each other really well. Um, I'm just taking my rotary cutter and tracing around my pattern. Just be careful not to slice your pattern up because then it starts to change shape. Um, another good thing about this project is you end up with a lot of these kind of triangular shapes, which if you ever decide you want to do any patchwork quilts, um, these are great scraps to have because you've got a lot to work with um, for your quilting projects, which that's also what I'm planning on doing with a lot of my leftover mask fabric is, 
using all of the rectangles and sewing them together um, into some fun little throw quilts. All right, so there we go. Since our fabric was folded in half, we've got our two pieces. Um, for this project, I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and use a black backing, um, just so you can see how nice they are when they're reversible. One thing I wanna show you guys is that I keep all of my paper um, patterns folded up in these nice little um, scrapbooking containers. You know, they're usually, they're just the right size to fit on the shelf and they're nice and narrow and I can stack them up. Okay, so I have my um, front piece here and uh, this is my back piece and I'm gonna put them right sides together, which means basically pretty sides touching. You know, this black fabric's the same on the front and the back, so it doesn't really matter, but assuming you were working with two different um, prints, you'd want the prints facing each other. So I'm just gonna put two pins in the top to mark my opening, and this is ridiculously easy. All we're gonna do is using um, a quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna sew over, down, around, back up, and back to the other pin, and we'll leave this spot open. And I decided to use red thread today because this uh, fabric has little red berries on it, which are really pretty. Now well, I screwed up and I started over here when I meant to start at my pin. Now when I'm turning a corner, I always leave my needle down, that way I can pick up my presser foot, but my pattern doesn't shift. As you can see, I'm letting the machine pull the fabric through. I'm not shoving it through or pushing it through. I'm just gently guiding it. And I backstitched just to seal off the ends. And then the next thing we're gonna do, and this is always important um, when you're working with something that has corners that you're gonna turn inside out is to snip off uh, the little extra bits. There we go. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're gonna do is find your little hole, put your two fingers in there, and I'm just using my thumb to poke out the, the tip of the bandana, and we're gonna turn it inside out, just gently pushing and pulling. Um, and then this is where something like either um, a dull pencil, uh, a chopstick, or a knitting needle comes in handy, you can Use it to poke out all those little corners. Just make sure you don't poke through them. You don't wanna accidentally poke a hole in it. Some of the flimsier fabrics, if you're not using quilter weight fabrics, you know, are so gauzy, you can easily puncture a hole in it. The baby is being very active in the background today, so <laughs> I don't know if you can hear them or not. Anyway, so here's the, the front, here's the back. Now we're going to take this to the ironing board and then all we have to do is basically fold it like this and stitch along this line to create the pocket that you can slip the collar through and we're done. That's it. All right, so here we are at the ironing board and all I'm going to do is iron this nice and flat. I use my um, knitting needle to really just kind of push out those seams just to get it nice and squared off. This part is important, you know, get a nice triangle so you don't have a lopsided bandana. All right, get the front, get the back. Now, 
Normally, if I was sewing a pillow or something, this would bother me because I don't have sharp corners, but this is gonna be folded over and tacked to the back and no one is ever gonna see that. So it doesn't bother me at all this time. And um, th All right, so I just put two pins in here um, to hold it in place. And this time I am not using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm just trying to get um, right up near that edge um, because we do have this one little flap opening here and when I tack this down, I wanna make sure I seal that shut at the same time. I am going to um, tack these ends down twice just because this is going to be around a collar, so um, it, it may get a little extra stress on it. It never hurts to have that extra layer of protection. So as you can see, it's all closed up and tacked down, and it's got a nice little red thread, nice detail. It looks great. Okay guys, so here's our finished product. You can see, you can, they can wear it on either side. It's nice and sturdy. It's got the loop for the collar to go through. Um, if you're gonna sell these, I sell them for 10 bucks and I usually have a little stuffed animal dog with the collar on so people can get, cause they're always like, what are these? And then, then they, they figure it out. Um, the best thing about these, and if you're selling them, definitely use this as a selling point, is they can go through the washing machine and the dryer, you know, which is important when you have a dog. Um, and the only other thing I want to show you is, um, here's the same, same bandana, but if we had decided to fold, to fold our pocket this way, you would have a black mask on the back and the sunflowers on the front. So either way you do it, um, you've got a great mask, these are, sorry, <laughs> I'm still in mask mode, a great bandana. Um, and these are, they make fun gifts. Um, they're ridiculously easy to sew. And I hope you like the pattern. Uh, stay safe, you guys. Take care. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. And um, I'll see you soon. Thanks.